Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I want to make a video about how we get internet on the road as somebody who works remotely full time. And I am going to preface this statement with, especially when it comes to tech, try to do everything about as inexpensively as possible. There are some things where I'm not very frugal, right? Like motorhomes apparently, but there's other things, and especially in tech. I just find that sometimes you don't always get what you pay for and a lot of stuff is just hype. So when it comes to recurring costs, I try to minimize that. It's one thing to pay like a hundred bucks for something. 100 bucks a month though is a completely different thing so I try to avoid that at all costs. Like with most things in tech if you have just a little bit of know-how and a ton of research you can figure out how to do just about anything on a budget. Let's get started. I work remotely full-time as a system admin. My job requires that I'm on from 6 a.m. to 3 p.m. pacific Monday through Friday. I do need internet that can allow me to download large files, applications, updates, video conference, video streaming, things like that. So it has to be a pretty good system. System. And of course I wanted something dead simple. I set it up and off we go, right? I also wanted it to be as inexpensive as possible, right? Don't we all? So when I started out back in 2015, I started out using my phone's hotspot and Starbucks Wi-Fi. At the time, I think that Google was just coming onto the scene with their Google Fi stuff. So it was actually pretty good. I could upload videos most of the time. Sitting in coffee shops for, for hotspots is usually less than ideal for most of us, especially if there's another person hogging the bandwidth. Emma and I are actually on a, a T-Mobile phone plan with my mom, and I have, we, we've been with T-Mobile for 14 years now, so there's, I think there's like six or seven lines. It's actually the least expensive, and coincidentally now the best option that we have for where we go, especially for that price, right? It's, it's, it's really hard to beat. And with T-Mobile, it's 50 bucks a month for the first line, Second line's 30 bucks, then it's uh, for our particular line, I think it's 10 bucks a month for everyone after that. As an added line, Emma and I are, are 10 bucks a month, but we also added a third line. So another 10 bucks for our internet, and I'll explain that a little bit. Something you should always look into, whether you're using it for your, your primary internet or not, is whether or not they have a corporate or military first responder discount. I know that we have a corporate discount from a former job that I've had. It's just held through. I think that's uh, that has saved us a, a good amount of money every month. So essentially, I usually trade something or I'll give my mom something, usually tech related. That is usually more than the value of whatever the phone line is every month so we don't have to do this thing where we exchange here's you know 30 bucks a month every month it's it, it, I, again it's one of those things like i'd rather pay once then pay every month and it works out it works out really well so there's there's a balance i don't think anybody's ever felt like it was it been unfair so when the plan changed and we no longer had unlimited hotspot data on the phones we had to look for a dedicated hotspot and a lot of times you'll see like the little verizon jetpack things that wasn't something i wanted to pay for myself so i ended up finding this little guy and you'll also see this rebranded with other companies they'll use this exact same hardware and they'll put their little sticker on there this is a gl inet spitz x750 and this is the version 2 all this is is a regular router right you have a, a router netgear uh, linksys whatever at home connected to your modem the big old comcast box or xfinity or whatever you have this is the exact same thing but it has a little you know just like your cell phone small this has that same exact modem in there that your cell phone has. So you have your, your antennas here for receiving signal. And then of course you have a Wi-Fi card in here that blasts out the signal. It's more than enough for this rig. You, all you have to do is just pop a SIM card in here. There are companies of course that use this, that they brand their internet as the best for RVers and travelers and van lifers and all that. But they're essentially, you pay for the hardware 100, 120 bucks or whatever. And then you pay a hundred dollars every single month. It makes absolutely no sense to me if we do the exact same thing bought the hardware for i think it was 80 bucks at the time then it's you know 10 bucks a month right that's for the exact same thing <laughs> this router does run software called openwrt and without getting too technical essentially what that is is open source router software that basically anything that you want to do with a router this guy's going to cover it it's it's open source there's a lot of little packages you can download most of which i don't run i run a few things and i have before uh, getting the new one i had a bunch of a bunch of commands and schedules set up for this but you really don't need it it's dead simple to set up and why that matters is because we had gone to best buy and looked at their routers and actually bought one for my mom because they live in an apartment. You want a little bit beefier of a router. And a lot of them have this Wi-Fi 6, they've got mesh network and they have all this garbage. And the problem I have with it is they require so much data of you. They want your phone number, your email. They want you to create accounts and all this. And working in tech, I'm extremely leery of any of that. As are many of my coworkers. We know what these companies do with our data. 
and we won't have any part of it. This, however, all it asks of you is give me a username and password so you can lock this guy down. People can't get in there and change your settings and then set a network name and set a network password. That's all you have to do. That is all you have to do because that's all you should have to do. <laughs> <laughs> it's just simple and it just makes sense. There's nothing that frustrates me more than these companies that try to get as much data out of you as possible. The the problem with these routers that are all locked down and they have all this extra garbage is you never know what they're doing. They will actually send encrypted traffic and they'll monitor your network for you, but you don't need that. Nobody needs that. Like at the end of the day, nobody needs that. It's not helpful. There's no benefit to it. Stop. Access the internet, period. Like I said, when you first set this guy up, of course, it's going to ask you for a username and password. I believe by default it's like admin and root and then it'll have you change that and then you give it a network name now this guy has 2.4 and 5 gigahertz networks and if you don't know the difference between that super easy 2.4 is a little tiny bit slower but it goes a little bit farther uh, it's a lower wave 5 gigahertz is a little bit faster but it has a shorter range how that affects us is i am always on the 5 gigahertz network because i have the router up here at the front where i think it's going to get the best signal here and i'm sitting right there but of course if i'm outside the rig or we're camping or i'm sitting out and i've got the awning out because i don't want bird poop on my laptop and it's a little bit farther way i might just connect to the 2.4 gigahertz network that's all that is now this is where the magic comes in so as you can see in here there's a little access door here and i put some velcro on there because that's usually we would have it attached up there and i've got a little sim card right in there and the cool thing is this also has a port over here for an sd card if you want to do file sharing or something like that or you want to upload custom configurations and do all sorts of fancy stuff that i don't get into because that stuff's kind of a headache to me that'll allow you to do it and then it's just you know an access right here there are vents on the back of course you can connect a usb drive which is kind of neat uh, and again it's one of those things that i've never done but if you want to plug in a hard drive and, and allow multiple people to access it or maybe it has movies so you want your tv or another device to be able to access it there's all sorts of cool stuff you can do with this and then on the back you have the ability to hardwire so if i'm at a hotel you can hardwire in there and then you create your own wi-fi of course you have your, your power outlet and you have a reset switch which that's a nice thing that's a nice thing it's simple otherwise it's so simple and it's not i mean again if this is my hand, this is the router, right? It's not big at all. Like that's super simple. In this software, there's only one thing that you have to change. So when you pop that SIM card in there, for example, T-Mobile, I believe there's a version for AT&T and Verizon. Some of them will do multiple. So I think mine only does AT&T and T-Mobile. Pop your SIM card in there though. It's going to automatically recognize it just like any cell phone, right? It's, it's no different. It, is a cell phone you can even do text messages with it obviously it doesn't have a speaker or a microphone otherwise you could do calls with it the only thing to change is that every carrier has a different ttl setting or time to live which basically is how many hops does a packet make and cell phones send at 64. And your cell phone gets full speed this guy i believe by default is 128 and that's just you know some carriers are higher some are lower t-mobile's is 64 and if if your phone for example has a ttl of 64 and so all you have to do is go right into the settings and then there's a little configuration most things you leave on auto but you go ahead and just type in 64 in the ttl field and then press save and you're good to go now you have full internet otherwise you can connect to the internet but it's extremely slow because t-mobile or at&t or verizon they just don't know what this device is and they would rather not share too much speed <laughs> you know and of course after you change the setting t-mobile thinks it's a regular phone because it is it has a phone modem in there it's lte and that's all there is to it it's extremely simple i love it and i think it's kind of one of those uh, guarded secrets because this information is kind of hard to find and i can sort of understand why these carriers don't really want you to know that you can do this instead of spending a lot of money on home internet and i've been using this for i think we've had this for two years now a little over two years no problems at all actually this is the backup device and i actually purchased this and kept our original one as a backup device just so that i always have connectivity no matter what even if i have a hardware failure that overheats or something crazy like that i can go back i my, my downtime is minimal and they both have the same network names and all of my devices are going to stay connected to it including our wise cam so we have 24 7 connection to this guy all the time and with that of course i can figure out like say this guy is stolen we can figure out where it's at based on its connectivity to the internet right because i don't think that the first thing somebody's going to do is go in and try to find a router no we have connection we have visuals we can figure out where we're where our rig is at which is really cool for uh 10 bucks a month and a short upfront investment of you know, 100 bucks or so that's a lot of peace of mind there are other devices of course that you can get like wi-fi boosters cellular boosters it's not worth it for me we generally speaking i found that folks that do have those you know they have might have an extreme need but some of those are four or five six seven hundred bucks where we go this has done us fine 99.9% .9 of the time. My work was so kind as to provide a little Verizon hotspot for us. That's cool. 
And I gotta say, I think I've used this uh, like maybe a handful of times just because the T-Mobile, this guy, generally speaking, if this doesn't have service, this Verizon hotspot doesn't have service. And just anticipating some questions, this guy only has LTE. So it's 3G and, and 4G LTE. That means that it does not have the new 5G or millimeter wave and all that good stuff. For our usage, that's okay. I mean, we're getting really good downloads. Generally, we're not anywhere below 17 megabits per second, which what we need our internet for, that is way more than adequate. Our upload speeds, obviously I upload all of our videos using this we have no problem for that now the difference between uh, 5g and lte is that lte it's a lower frequency so it's going to travel farther again it's one of those things where it's a little bit slower but the 5g network was really designed for short wave fast transmission but those signals are easily lost now i know with our iphones they say 5g all the time even when we're only getting lte it says 5G. When we have 5G, it's really, really fast. But if you want to get one of these, you certainly can with 5G, but they cost over 750 bucks from what we're seeing. Absolutely not worth it. When this does the job, it's cheap. If something happens to it, I don't, yeah, I'm not gonna cry, right? LTE is more than good for us. If we could get 5G, you know, why not? But very, very happy with this. I'd love to know what you guys do for internet. If you have any questions at all, leave it down in the comments below. We're not sponsored by any companies at all, but this is a pretty cool product. So you can find them on Amazon or their website. I'll link the website below. I found that their website is usually cheaper than Amazon lately, but I actually bought the first one on Amazon because it was cheaper there. So shop around. See you in the next video. Bye guys.